Uh, welcome back on this third video on transformers or the second one in this series we're going to be looking at buck boost connections for higher voltages all right let's look close at this diagram you notice the transformer connections it is what the transformer connections are wired for a 240 volt input but instead, I have connected 120 volts across H1 and the H2-H3 junction. What does that do for us? Because these windings are in, because of the way the windings are, direction of windings and so forth, what I've done is induce 120 volts into the secondary winding and because they are 180 degrees out of phase, one of the thing about magnetics is the induced voltage is always the opposite phase of the voltage that produced it, produced it I believe. And thus, I have managed to get 240 volts output from the transformer by putting 120 volts AC in. Now I still have my 24 volt connection over here I'm not concerned with that for this video. Okay, how did this work exactly? How, do, how could I do this? Oh, note one thing. This is high voltage again. Transformers are good to provi mm, for providing um, isolation from the power line. In this configuration, there is no voltage isolation, so be very aware of that. Again, here is the transformer I'll be using. Its primary has two 120 volt windings, separate unconnected windings, and a secondary 24 volt winding. That's really 25.2, but I'll leave it at 24. Note something, and you and I'll put a link into uh, the appropriate web page on this. In two, in two transformer windings, if, if you put them in series, if they are 180 degrees out of phase, they will add. So if you put properly, say, a 20 volt transformer winding in series with a 20 volt transformer winding and they are 180 degrees out of phase, you will have a 40 volt output. You can see that here because the peak the positive peak on this sine wave at 1 is the exact opposite of the negative peak on the sine wave on the uh, number 2. So the sum potential difference or voltage difference is times 2. Alright, let's look at this. I have redrawn my black transformer as you see over here. It's actually two separate windings independent of each other and from H the winding direction from H4 to H3 and from H2 to H1 is the same direction. What I went ahead and did was went ahead and of course connected H2 to H3. I still have my 24 volts out here. I'm not concerned with that here yet. All right first thing I did was wire the uh, transformer for 240 volts input but instead from the center tap to H1 in this case I input 120 volts. The output from um, H1 to H4, I didn't mark it H4 up here, is now 240 volts. This is what is called an auto transformer. Your primary is, uh, is from here to here where you put in the 120 volts. Your secondary is from this point to this point. So in, so in a bizarre way, the way in the world of magnetics and physics, half of the secondary is also the primary. And again, this depends on how you wind the windings in the transformer, which is why you have to pay attention to these markings. If I flip the transformer around 
and it's wired for 240 volt input, and I input 120 instead of 240, I have made a step-down auto transformer with the primary being from H1 to H4 and the second one, secondary, being from H1 to the center tap. This step down the voltage to 60 volts in this case. As for the uh, back here in the center, as I had it before, it's the secondary still put out 24 volts. Over here in this configuration, because I'm using half the voltage and twice the windings, and I got the 60 volts here, I also cut the 24 volt output by half. Now we're really going to mix things up. I'm going to take I'm going to wire this as before as 120 volt AC input, but I'm going to leave open the H4 winding. But I'm going to go around, and this time we're going to be using that secondary 25 volt winding. I'm going to connect H4 up to X1. What happens is this. Remember what I said. If the phases are 180 degrees out of phase, they add. If they are um, in phase, they subtract. So what I did was connect the H4 connection to the X1 connection. And because these two, what's going to happen here is the voltage output from H1 to X2 is going to be, it's going to subtract. I'm going to get 215 volts in this case instead of 240. All right, let's talk about some electrical characteristics of transformers. Transformers are sized by determining the total load required in amps. Transformer capacity is rated in KVA, that is kilovolt amperes. The load volta voltage and load amps must be known to calculate the KVA rating. Note, the manufacturer does not recommend loading the transformer above 80% of its KVA rating. When the KVA rating has been calculated, divide that number by 0.8 to get the minimum KVA rating needed. Example, I need a 24 volt AC at 30 amp transformer. So 24 volts times 30 amps is 720 volt amps divided by 1000. That's 0 0.72 KVA. 0 0.72 kVA divided by 0 0.8 is 0 0.9 kVA or 900 VA volt amperes. Use a 1 kVA transformer. I don't think they make a 900. 1 kVA should be more standard. Example number 2. I have a 1 kVA transformer. What are my max amps at 24 volts? First, multiply KVA, 1 KVA, by 0 0.8, and I get 800 volt amps, or 0 0.8 KVA. Then divide 800 volt amps by 24 volts, and I get approximately 33 amps. That's how it's done. Thanks to Alpha Transformer, for their for the uh, information off their website all right let's look at the first connection we've got i've connected it for 120 volts and remember it has two separate 120 volt windings in this case by wiring them as shown in the plate i have connected h3 to h1 i've connected h2 to h4 what this does when you do that is these transformer windings are in parallel with each other and they are in phase. If I was, for instance, to try to reverse wire, say uh, I connected H1 to H4 and H3 for H2, I'd blow the transformer. You have to wire it this way for those two 
windings to be both in parallel, wound in the same direction, and they will be in phase as far as the 120 volts goes. On the secondary, I marked it as 25.2 because that's what it actually produces at X1 and X2. These transformers come with some pins that you can put a fuse on it. Uh, so what size fuse do we need? Okay, what I done, I changed the formula slightly from what the manufacturer said. All right, F2, I'm going to have to divide 200 volt amps by 25.2 multiplied by 0 0.85. Remember, I'm using the actual measured voltage, not the label voltage. Comes out to 6.75 amps. Um, actually, the transformer, if you strung it all the way out, would produce 8 amps at 24 volts. I would recommend a 7 amp fuse. Here are my connections for 240 volts. In this case, H2 is wired to H3 as it is showed in the label. And you have to, again, you have to wire this correctly because now the windings, while they are in series, they have to be wound in the same direction. If you had one of the two windings uh, wound backwards, it would basically cancel out the magnetic field and you would blow the circuit because with no inductive reactance, it's a dead short. The secondary output is exactly the same as before. All right, here's some extra things to consider when um, connecting transformers. In this case, I want the two secondary windings on my two separate transformers I want them in series and how and in a way it acts as one giant say 50 volt center tap transformer when the two are connected like this as far as the primaries go whether the primaries are connected for 110 to I mean 120 or 240 you have to connect them as so you have two separate transformers connected like this you'll connect H4 to the other H4 and H1 to the other H1 the same thing you would do here is connect H4 to the other H4 and H1 to the other H1 and you'll have two 240 volt windings in parallel on two separate transformers Keep that in mind because if you were to reverse that, you would reverse the phase of the 24 or 25 volt output relative to X1 and X2. Easy to hook up, connect X2 to X1, assuming your primaries are wired properly. And there's two ways to rectify this. In this uh, setup, this is full wave rectification. I have a page on uh, diode rectification. This would produce a full wave rectified output. It would not come out to be 50 volts. It's still going to come out to be 25.2 times 1.414 because I got a filter cap on it. So I'm going to put out 36 volts if I didn't have the filter cap, it would be 24 volts or 25 volts pulsating DC. But the 8 amps, which on paper, paper these things could supply, add together. So I have 36 volts DC at 16 amps. All right, here is another variation using the previous circuit where the two transformers are connected together, I went ahead and grounded it, and I, insult, and I installed two filter caps in series, but this time I used a full wave diode bridge. Um, you will often see this done in a lot of stereo equipment, audio amplifiers and whatever, and this produces a bipolar power supply of plus 36 and minus 36 volts at approximately 8 amps. And so this would be a full this would be a uh, bipolar power supply. 
Finally, I remove the common ground. I remove both uh, filter, <coughs> excuse me, both filter capacitors have been removed. And in this case, remember, each of the transformers is still 8 amps. And so my output would be a pulsating DC at 120 hertz, full wave. It'd be 50 volts DC at 8 amps, unfiltered. All right, that completes this uh, tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Press the like and the little bell if it's down there. Thanks for listening.